Hello, Fantastic Beast fans. Earlier today, the first screening for Crimes of Grindelwald was held in China, with several of the cast attending and 25 minutes of the film shown. We're so lucky to have Wizard Who, who attended all events, join us to give the inside scoop for the cast interviews and footage shown. I'm Susan Chapala, Fantastic Secrets behind Fantastic Beasts, to bring you the news. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. And make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you'll be notified when videos post and won't miss out on the next clues. The first of several international screening and preview events was held yesterday in Beijing, China for The Crimes of Grindelwald. Stars Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Waterston, Jude Law, and Ezra Miller were in attendance, and 26 minutes of the film was shown. At Wizard Who was one of the lucky attendees. She's been covering the Harry Potter fandom for China for over two decades and was the first to recognize the Zowu and its characteristics when the rest of us were confused about the new beast. You can see the video she did with me on the Zowu at the link above. Like yesterday's, this video also requires a special spoiler warning. We will be covering details from this screening. Although the end of the film was not shown in great detail, more like an extended trailer, so there's no new revelations there. However, there are several new bits from earlier in the film. Please be careful before proceeding about your own comfort level. But also, please recognize that the information you're about to hear is truly a spoiler for many fans. So please be careful and considerate with how you share it. Also, I asked Wizard Who to share with us just the new clip shown, not stuff we've already seen before in trailers or the TV clips. I'll present Wizard Who's information in the timeline that it was presented. First up was the Ministry of Magic scene with senior officers sitting around a pensieve. In previously released information from MuggleNet's set visit, it was revealed that this scene includes, besides Newt, Theseus, head of British Ore Office, Torkel Travers, head of Magical Law Enforcement, Rudolf Spellman, head of Incarceration, International Confederation of Wizards, and Arnold Guzman, U.S. Emissary to Internal Confederation of Wizards. They're interrogating Newt about his trip to New York and are also briefing him about Credence as the key to Grindelwald's plans. They ask Newt to kill Credence. Next up was the London scene from the rooftop of St. Paul's Cathedral. Wizard Who reveals that Dumbledore cast a spell to cover London in mist. That's some fairly awesome power there. Then he revealed that he's the one who sent Newt to New York. Although she can't remember exact wording, Wizard Who recalls the conversation this way. Newt, the Ministry of Magic is convinced that you sent me to New York. Dumbledore, and you told them I didn't? Newt, although you did. Ha, very smart dialogue. But we've known for a long time that Dumbledore manipulated Newt to New York. Nice to have it confirmed. Then, Newt's house in London was shown. As Wizard Who says, baby nifflers are up for the game. Very cute and naughty. Newt steps down to his basement, which looks just like the concept art shown. He cares for the moon calf and Kelpie, then goes upstairs to find Queenie and Jacob in his living room. Jacob says that swooping evil didn't wipe out his happy memories, so he remembers Newt and all. But Wizard Who said Jacob's behavior was rather odd, so he must have still been under Queenie's spell. However, she does not remember them showing the clip of Jacob coming out of the spell. Next up is a Hogwarts scene from the current 1927 timeline with our first completely new revelation. According to Wizard Who, Dumbledore refers to a lady with a Scottish accent as Professor McGonagall. She's about 30-something, so she couldn't be Minerva McGonagall or her mom. There's also a Gryffindor senior student in that class who's called McLagan. This scene is the one where the ministry representatives show up. Professor McGonagall is seen leading the students from the classroom. I showed this image of our mystery teacher to Wizard Who, and she said this was not Professor McGonagall. But there's a bit of a problem with this identification of a Professor McGonagall at Hogwarts in 1927 when Minerva was not born until 1935. It's revealed to Umbridge in Chapter 15 of Order of the Phoenix 
that Minerva began teaching at Hogwarts 39 years before, which puts it at 1956, two years after her graduation. If you read Minerva McGonagall's backstory on Pottermore, it reveals that even though she married, McGonagall was her maiden name and her father was a muggle with no signs of magicals in his family. So who could this earlier Professor McGonagall be? Is she someone unrelated to Minerva? Is she perhaps a magical in her father's family that he was totally unaware of? Or perhaps what would be even more fun, is this a time-traveling Minerva? Did Minerva, who was so instrumental in helping Hermione get permission for a time-turner years later to take more classes and taught her the dangers to be aware of, perhaps play with a bit of time-traveling herself? Perhaps to give Dumbledore a warning of what was to come? What do you think? From the UK, the film then headed to France, where Lita was shown in the archive room of the French ministry. According to Wizard Who, Lita whispers the name Lestrange, and one shelf swiftly moves toward her. She finds out that the archive was moved to the Lestrange family mausoleum. Then she meets Newt and Tina, who are hiding behind that shelf, and they make a crazy escape with the Matago giving chase. The Zoe plays a big role in that escape and helps Newt jump to the cemetery in the blink of an eye. She said that Newt occioed his case before the Zowu jumps, which probably contains Tina and Lita. I'm guessing that the Lestrange archive, which was moved to the mausoleum, is behind this shelf, which we've mentioned in prior videos where both Abernathy and Lita are shown to be looking and comma pointing. Obviously something very important in that archive. In another scene, Credence and Nagini are hiding in an attic when Grindelwald comes to Credence. He gives Credence a map located the Lestrange family mausoleum with that raven symbol waving its wings. He tells Credence to come to the cemetery that night to seek for his true identity. This sounds like a similar image we saw of Queenie touching the raven on one of Grindelwald's banners. Could this be how Grindelwald sends out his party invites to all those he wants to ensure attend his cozy get-together in the amphitheater? There's a lot to break down here in this attic scene. First, in a prior video, while I'd speculated that Grindelwald would meet with Credence to persuade him to his cause, I thought it would take place in this room. However, Wizard Who says that their meeting took place on the top of a blown-out rooftop. Could it be part of this scene where Credence and Nagini are on the rooftop and Credence shoots out his Obscurus from his hand? And if so, then that means the explosion we see with Grimson must happen prior to it. I'm wondering if Credence's new control over his power is a direct result of that explosive scene with Grimson. There's one more very interesting aspect to this attic scene in the screening. Wizard Who says, Credence is feeding a tiny bird, which looks much like a phoenix after its burning day. We saw Credence with a fully grown phoenix in the leaked Russian trailer, but that was in this room, which in a prior video I thought might be the Rosier home. However, I also thought the phoenix belonged to the Rosiers. Either I was wrong about that, or Credence could have stolen, liberated, the phoenix from this home, whosoever it is. So would that place this scene prior to the one on the rooftop before the phoenix is reborn? Or would it come significantly after, when the phoenix has had time to grow again? Also, as part of the Grimson blow-up scene, we saw a huge firewall swarm over Grimson's head. It seems to come from the Obscurus, though that is not positive. Could Credence's blow-up have created a phoenix? Or, since we saw him in a bird market as part of his and Nagini's escape from the circus, did he acquire a phoenix that came to his aid during the Grimson scene? If so, that could explain why it was then turned back to a baby afterward. One of his burning days, as Dumbledore said of Fox. Finally, Grindelwald gave Credence directions to the cemetery where he would find out more about his identity. The soundtrack lists a song called Restoring Your Name. So from here on out, will Credence Barebone be known as Corvus Lestrange? And is there something in that archive that will be the reason why Credence, Corvus, is persuaded to join Grindelwald? And I'm really curious as to what sort of ritual will take place to restore Credence's name. 
finally, there was one other new reveal that we actually talked about in a video released earlier today as it related to Marie's theory. In the mirror of Eris had seen, showing young Albus and Gellert in the mirror, Wizard Who says, Young Grindelwald and Dumbledore used their wand to cut their palm, and two drops of blood floated in the air, then formed a pendant. I find it fascinating that the two drops of blood are so precise. For more on the blood pact between young Gellert and Albus, see the link above. While that is all from the screen, I do have one other revelation courtesy of Wizard Who. A few weeks ago, I reported on World Screen China's coverage that showed our mystery woman as Perinelle Flamel and the blue fire dragon of the graveyard as a Swedish short snout. I've been wondering for a while if these were verified revelations from Warner Brothers or if they were assumptions made by the magazine's writers. Wizard Who checked with her contacts at World Screen China and verified that they were assumptions. So personally, I think these links to Perinelle and the Swedish short snout are questionable. I can't thank Wizard Who enough for bringing us this inside look into the Beijing screening. Be sure you check out her excellent Twitter feed, at Wizard Who. The filmmakers frequently give China sneak peeks and special previews, and Wizard Who covers them all. Also, the pictures I've used here in presenting the screening come from Wizard Who, but also from Warner Brothers China. So, what do you think? Are we about to see a time-traveling Professor McGonagall or one of her relatives? And how hard is it going to be to switch to saying Corvus instead of Credence? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Also, please check out my new fan shop on Amazon for books and Funko Pops and wands and all things Fantastic Beasts.